One, one big question to kind of wrap up here that we could probably talk forever on, but you mentioned earlier about doing, doing kind of the other stuff, the making the calls and kind of, that, this is another thing that I've been really obsessed with, with music is that the big, a big part of it is learning your actual craft of doing, sitting there doing the practicing in your practice room. But the one thing that has always been annoying to me about like college, for example, is that when I got out, you know, what I knew, I always felt that like when, like say you go into public school, most of the people that come into public school and teach their playing ability is so far beyond what they really need for this job. And what they really need more training on is like learning how to come at a student and how to discipline them. And pedagogy. so the pedagogy mm -hmm. stuff. And so I felt the same way when I came out and started gigging is that I felt like, you know, I was, you know, overqualified is a silly thing to say, but I felt like my playing ability was plenty of what I needed. What I was really confused at is like when, what is when like I'm dealing with a bandmate and how do I deal with that bandmate like emotionally and conversationally and like when when in college you'd ask a string quartet like you don't even ask if we're gonna rehearse yeah we're gonna you know I mean that it's breathing you know I mean you don't even ask that question you ask when not if you, but well you go talk to some country guys and they're like oh yeah you know we'll just go you know we'll just pick all three chord tunes and then we'll just go wing it you know and and so that was a lot of the kinds of stuff that I that took me a long time the being flexible kinds of stuff and how many decisions you got to make being in a band like where are we going to go look for gigs right who who is going to talk on this mic right what are we going to wear to the shows like are we going to have uh, who are we going to make a website you know who's going to advertise what songs are we going to play you know there's like these thousand decisions that we never had to make in classical right there's all decided yeah. And then, and then also like the idea of the business side of, of music of my dad, the accountant, you know, he's like, so how much did you make last year? And I'm like, uh, you know, cause I didn't ever make a spreadsheet. I didn't, you know, I write, keep track of my gigs. I didn't, uh, when I'm up on stage, he's like, how do you tell a jokes to the audience mm. to get them to, you know, have eyes to the stage how do you come at this bar owner all that kind right. of stuff is all the business talk stuff about that. all the business stuff i'm still trying to work on because i i was fortunate through most of my professional full-time life you know playing with ida mcbath mm -hmm. you know that was all her stuff you yeah. know here's where i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to wear this so i show up and you know do it get paid and go home that was you know i realize now how simple how easy that was and i've gone back and thanked her you know, thank you for all the work, you know, uh, and, and every band leader that I play with now, because I do a lot of one-offs as, as a hired yeah. gun because of the aforementioned repertoire mm. and versatility, <clears throat> but I, I thank the band leader at the end of the night for the work because I know it didn't just magically appear. Mm. So um, ever since, you know, basically starting this brand that is Troubadour Retrievers, which kind of grew out of of uh, Jerry's Jam Night um, thrown into the stuff that I have no skill set for. College didn't teach me music business. Yes. So you're right. Any music degree, um, especially a performance one, I mean, there's probably a music business degree at this point, but yeah. it's like to be complete, you got to have that in there. Yeah. I'd say more studio as well. And that's, boy, we could talk for hours in studio because yeah. that's, that's my real passion yeah. is studio stuff. Uh, and now running my own studio as well. Uh, but boy, talk about time consumption. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm just having to learn because somebody's got to do it, mm -hmm. right? And you know, uh, what what I say towards the beginning, the sloth of the the modern musician. Yeah, they don't want to do a lot of things. I don't want to do it either. Yeah. But my livelihood does depend upon yeah. it. So somebody's got to do it. There we go. So. Just kind of started, started figuring out. Okay, mm -hmm. how am I going to do all these things? And my girlfriend Nicole did tons, and she she's the one that kind of encouraged me. Okay, maybe you should like be more in charge of your own destiny yeah. and start creating these things. Um, and 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 she's been right in, in every respect because it's broadened you know my my uh, base of 
of uh, you know, network, you know, all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, but yeah, as far as hands-on work, I mean, she built the Troubadour Retrievers web website. Yeah. She, all those lyrics that are yeah. there, she made those wow. lyrics. Oh yeah, so wow. it's still, her. oh That's absolutely. Nice thing to her. Oh, yeah. it's unbelievable how much she's done. And, and at, at the time that, that she was doing all this stuff, I felt that nobody was appreciating that. I was the only one that was, you know, privy to all that. And so I, eventually she got some, uh, some thanks. You know, but yeah. we're talking like stupid amounts of work. Yeah, and so that's great. That kudos you did that. to her, absolutely. So, so I can't take credit, but you know, but so you know, that's what kind of started the the process. I guess it's been about six years since that brand, you know, and then in the time mm -hmm. being, uh, Beauty and the McBeast with Crystal mm -hmm. Gatewood. But you know, ultimately in that product, she's doing most of that behind the scenes business. I'm doing the studio stuff because we're writing, writing and recording an album to be released hopefully by Christmas. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just had a session last night, brought in a flautist. It was awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm going to have you back. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Yeah, you're, it was fun to do that. Yeah, you're already on one, but yeah. uh, there's, there's another one that I'd uh, get, get you in on violin. On. But so that product um, around the same time that uh, well, basically some clubs, some jazz clubs were dying, which was just kind of killed my livelihood. Had to start creating stuff. So uh, Lonnie Miller approached me about doing this uh, uh, Special Forces, mm -hmm. uh, a tribute to 38 Special. So doing that project as well. And um, one thing college did prepare me for, specifically my uh, professor, Dr. Lawrence Captain. Uh, the first thing he said to me was like, you need to buy a day planner, mm -hmm. which back then was paper, you know, oh, right, and now yeah. of course digital is fantastic. Yeah. In fact, I have everyone's calendars. Okay, so-and-so, I can't, I can't book this gig because so-and-so's, yes. uh, you know, but Troubadour Retrievers versus any other, I call it a brand. We're a different lineup every gig. Yeah, right. We're all in a million bands. We're all longtime pros. We all have a huge repertoire. Right. So, you know, you were talking about rehearsing. We've never rehearsed, not right. once. Yeah. It's it's but you uncanny. But, but you've set that up, and, and you found people that you can actually do that with, yeah. And right? If, yeah. If I can't book a what I call a capable lineup, it doesn't happen. Right. Because you can't misrepresent the brand and mm -hmm. take an uh, inferior product out there. Right. Um, you know, so, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's a that's a long discussion there. But, so, but yeah, the, the, trying to keep the schedule straight when... You're playing in a million bands and studio sessions, interviews with Rob Foster. <laughs> um, so how many guys? And that's the other thing is that like, is is what we what we hope as musicians that we can just go in our practice room, we practice, and then we get called for gigs. But I was another guy. I can't remember who it was on the show. Or uh, Phil Shirelli was talking about that his son plays with Florida Georgia Line. Okay, and so they were talking about that he went to audition for them, and these guys like had him sit in a room and play for like, God, three minutes or something, and they're like, okay, let's go have a beer, you know, and then so he played for three minutes, mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, we've heard enough, you know, and so then they went for an hour and went and talked to the dude, and I was like, that is freaking genius because yeah. we already know you're fine, you know, you, you True. can play. We want to know basically how you're going to be on the road. We want to know, you know, what, you know, do you have a freaking calendar, yeah. right? Do you are Who you going to be investing in? Yes, and the personality wise yeah. and. That I think is one of the huge things that of why these guys aren't working and why these guys are is because of like general flakiness, not answering the phone, yeah. not knowing oh, when the gig me. is. Nuts. Anybody, there's, there's, you know, I don't even know, want to know the number, but 500 musicians in town that are plenty good enough players to play gigs all the time, but they're no, they're uh, don't care. They don't care. Don't care. Because they don't have their crap together. They don't no. have the calendar. Communicate with know. me. Show up on time. Have a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. don't be a jerk. Yeah. All, all of those things. And of course, you know, Troubadour Retrievers. But, uh, you know, Guy Hodgson's a jerk. Brett Belay's a jerk. <laughs> Bruce Haley's a jerk. Eric Nettle's a jerk. All of them yeah. jerks. And that's why we get along so well. Yeah. <laughs> That's part yeah, of Craig's, Craig's definitely a jerk. Hey, Craig's a jerk. <laughs> you know, Captain Chaos. So, yeah. We, you know, we all have yeah. nicknames for one another, yeah. and purposefully, uh, it's like sport to us. Yeah. That childish, uh, you know, locker room, you know, jock kind of behavior. Yeah. 
you know, making fun. And we do it publicly too. Like, <laughs> Well, Craig, Craig and Boulet, Craig and Boulet, they they probably need to be given crap once in a while for something. I don't know what for, but probably for something. Yeah, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, um, <laughs> it's fun. So yeah. I'm